everybody. Welcome to the Transportation and Parking Commission. Uh, meeting for Tuesday, February 13th, 2018. Uh, my name is uh, James Nash and I'll be presiding over the meeting until a, uh, a new chair is elected. And we're hoping that that's on the agenda for today. Um, the camera is on. Is there anybody here who'd like to speak for public comment? Kathy. Yes. Uh, do I have to not quite the heck? My name is Kathy Borowski, and I'm uh, asking that no parking signs be put on the east side of Vernon Street. People park on both sides of Vernon Street between Elm and Jewett, and if you're trying to drive down the street and there's snow, the cars park out in the middle of the street. If you're driving a snowplow truck, it's you're clearing the cars by inches. Can I get your address? 218 Audubon Road in Leeds. So I would like to see no parking on the east side of Vernon Street from Elm to Federal, but definitely from Elm to Jewett Street. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's tight. It's really tight, especially with the snow. That's it. I was told to come to this meeting to make my request. So how do we usually handle a request like that? Because it's not on the agenda, we sort of basically listen. And then listen and sometimes the department head can take an advisement, sometimes that's, it's an item that becomes a future agenda item. It's already that way on Washington Avenue. You can only park on one side of the street, so you can you can get by. But if a car is coming in the other direction on Vernon Street and, and there's only room for one car to pass if there's cars parked on both sides of the street. So and it's dangerous. The high school's right there. There's, at two o'clock it's a it's a busy little corner. Mm -hmm. So. Councilor, I'll, I'll speak to this a little bit when I do my um, my departmental updates, but um, we can talk a little bit about the process that we have in place um, and sort of the new process that, that we're, um, we're implementing to deal with these sort of parking requests. All right, thank you. Okay, that's it. Do you want to wait around? No, nope, I want to go back to work. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you guys, I made my request. You guys can figure can out what's best. Can you leave your contact information with Councillor Nash so that he can... Sure. What do you need? My email? Email? email would be terrific. So we can let you know how we can just fix everything. <laughs> can we ask questions of the public? Yeah, go ahead, Rich. Ask questions. <laughs> so you said the, the east side, so downtown side. Correct. How'd you choose that? Um... There's more driveways that come out on that side. Okay. So it just seems like with the driveways, I mean, there aren't a lot of places where people can park, but they do park wherever they can. Uh, and right up to Jewett Street, you know, there's, there's not, and then from beyond Jewett Street, it just seems like there's more driveways and cross streets coming from the east side. So that's how I made my determination. One of our concerns, I don't know if I can say, in the past has been that it just pushes the problem elsewhere. Mm -hmm. No, it probably will, but, okay. yeah, this, that's my two cents. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, could we now do the roll call? Do I do that? Well, have, Ryan um, usually had us go around and introduce ourselves on the public question, although you should certainly introduce yourself. Um, okay. Or, uh, um, well, the previous way of doing it, that is people that inter introduce themselves. I'm Jim Nash, the Ward 3 Counselor. I'm Jim Louise Shara, the Ward 4 Counselor. Alan Verson from the Planning Board. Jody Casper, Police Chief. Rich Cooper, Citizen. Wayne Tyden, Director of Planning Sustainability. Christy Burnett, Citizen. Donald Scotty, Director of Public Works. And Jamie Fisher, Citizen. Maggie Chan, DPW. Nancy Forrest Ball, Assistant City Collector. Thank you. All right. Have people had a chance to look over the December meeting minutes? And do we have a motion for approval? Second. Second by Wayne. Um, all in favor and discussion? All. Is it Gina who yes. 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 Any discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Any abstainers here? Okay. So, if 
everybody says I except for Mr. Cooper. Uh, so next on the agenda is to elect a new TPC chair or decide to put that off to the March meeting. Um, is there? I move to open nominations. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Do I need to vote on that? No. Um, so nominations are open? I think we need to vote to open the nominations. Okay, all in favor of opening nominations? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, I nominate Councillor Nash as the chair. I'll second that. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor of closing nomination? Say aye. 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 Um, so now we need to vote on. So uh, I believe the way this is done, you vote by saying Councillor Nash, correct? Yes. So um, uh, Beth, you want to do a roll call on this or? Sure. Or should we just go around the room? Councilor Nash. <laughs> Councilor Nash. Councilor Nash. Since it's only one candidate, isn't that a little silly? <laughs> lots of things, lots of terms. <laughs> yeah, all right. Councilor Nash. Councilor Nash. Councilor Nash. Councilor Nash. Councilor Nash. Oh, okay. Vote? Yeah, I'll vote for Councillor Nash. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for your votes. All right. Um, we have. Um, oh yeah, we got to elect the vice chair. So, um, do I have a motion to open nominations for vice chair? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor of opening nominations for the vice chair? Aye. Aye. Um, do we have any nominations? I would like to make one. I would like to nominate Councillor Shara for Vice Chair. I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> so you can make a motion to close nominations. <laughs> <laughs> move this along. <laughs> second. All in favor of closing nominations? Aye. Aye. All right, so now we will vote. Um, we'll do a once around the room uh, with um, where you say the name of the person you want to elect for vice chair. <laughs> I would like to vote for Councillor Shara. 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 All right. Congratulations, Councilor Thank you as well. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's see. All right. So the next thing on the agenda, ordinance for parking on Pleasant Street, necessary because of Complete Streets project. And um, let's see. What do we have here? Yeah. Shall I read this thing? Hmm? Yes. Um, relative to parking on Pleasant Street in ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City and City Council assembled as follows. Section one that what the heck? of the code of ordinances be amended as follows um, parking uh, schedule one parking prohibited at all times um, we're talking about pleasant street on the easterly side from holyoke to hockenham road pleasant street on the southwesterly side point 258 feet south easterly of hampton avenue to a point 457 feet southeasterly of Hampton Avenue. Um, 
and then we're striking this, is that correct? Mm -hmm. We're striking Pleasant Street uh, on the westerly side, a point 51 feet northerly from Michaelman Avenue to a point 102 feet southerly. Um, okay, in changing it to the westerly side, uh, from Millbank to Hockenham Road. Um, and one last change on Pleasant Street, uh, on the westerly side from Kingsley Avenue to Michaelman Avenue. Uh, time limit uh, in class two hours to a class of 1B. Thank um, you. Sure. Um, so as part of the complete street Pleasant Street area that's striped off um, is a currently a parking space but the meter is back off because of this ordinance so we want to allow people to park in that space again and then Millbank Place to Hockenham Road that is a bike lane so we that. and then and then there's the last part about Kingsley, uh, Westerly on, from Kingsley to Michaelman. Yep, so that is the metered space that's currently backed off. Oh, okay, it, all right. That's in front of the sports bar. And I'd like to say um, that the, the improvements have actually made this space come back because of the bump out by uh, oh. the uh, beer can museum that, um, that Neighbors had asked that that space be blocked off because as they entered the crosswalk, people couldn't see them. But now with the with the improvements, that the space is back, so it's providing more parking. So um, So yes, a motion to recommend this to council. Um, do um, do people would uh, are people uh, do I so I take a nomination for that or? Um, I move a positive recommendation. Okay. Second. Discussion. Discussion. So just one kind. Of, the ordinance is great. Just so you all keep the back of your mind. If you remember, when we did the changes on Pleasant Street. We said the area between Hockman and Holyoke Street. Um, we weren't charging for parking when we first had it out because we sort of wanted people to use the parking um, and we wanted to give it sort of a year trial. So just sort of keep it in the back of your mind and watch it over the winter when you walk by. At some point, once the spaces are heavily used, I think they are already, it might be worth extending where we charge for parking to include that area. But um, we're not resolving it. So you keep it in the back of your mind. Thank you. Um, what was the change in the parking rates? Then? You, said, or you said it went from one hour to no, it's just two. designating that it's a two-hour oh. parking spot. So we have a positive recommendation on the floor to Ben. Um, seconded. Um, any more discussion? All in favor of sending this forward with a positive recommendation, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. We have three ordinances related to the use of bicycles on bicycle lanes, uh, buffered bike, bicycle lanes, cycle tracks, and multi-use trails to implement bike, walk, bike Northampton and clarify some unclear rules. Wayne, do you want to speak to this? Sure. Or? Let me just walk with you. Do you have any copies of these? Okay. Some extra copies of these. So three separate things all in one document, but 
Um, if you go on the, the bike path through downtown now, um, and you cross uh, Old South Street right down Obama Hill, Craft Avenue, um, there's a section of the bike path that's actually on the sidewalk in front of a soup restaurant. Um, because we don't allow bicycling on sidewalks, that means technically there's a section of the bike path we're not supposed to bicycle. Um, and then now that we have um, cycle tracks on Pleasant Street, we have, we have a few, two places where we have bike paths at the level of the sidewalk, fully designed for people to bicycle, and yet a strict reading of our ordinance could actually apply you're not allowed to bicycle. So this would say, bicycling is not allowed in Central Business District and Florence Business District, which has been true for years, except as part of a route of a bike path. Um, so that's the first one. Um, the second one is the original language about multi-use trails was originally written for the, well, the so-called Northampton Bikeway, which went from State Street to Bridge Road. And then we never really redefined all the multi-use trails we have in the city. So there's an attempt to sort of define all the ones we have, but leave it open to grow as we get more trails. Um, and then the last one, this came out of the Walk Bike Northampton plan, where there's a requirement that city council approve all bike lanes. And so there's a lag, so you're not allowed to park in a bike lane. There's a lag between when DPW or MassDOT creates a bike lane and we go through the process. And this basically says if we're physically building a bike lane, then it's a bike lane and people shouldn't be parking in it. And then the last thing related to this is, I heard this specifically at Lathrop Home, one of the other places in town. There's always going to be special events. We don't want people bike, parking in the bike lane routinely, but there's going to be times when it comes up and that's appropriate. And so it just sets up a process where the police department and the mayor can say, yeah, there's a special event here and during this you know, three hour event, whatever it is, it's okay for people to park there. Just as we have a process now for putting bags on meters, it's sort of the same basic concept. And, and Wayne, could you explain why E and F are being removed? Yeah, because right now the process has been city council has to designate each bike lane sort of the retail level. Someone creates a new bike lane and goes before city council. And so we're dropping that, we're deleting that section and replacing it by saying, if it's a bike lane that's been so designated by DPW or MassDOT, then the bike lane rules apply. Like I don't know, Maggie, maybe you know whether Route 66, which was sort of created a bike lane but signed, was that ever formally designated by city council as a bike lane? It might be in Orton. Okay, but in any case, there was a lag for some of them going through. So. so, is it okay with people that I don't read all of this? People all right with that? Um, so, uh, do we have a motion to send this forward with a positive recommendation or any sort of recommendation? So moved. Second. Um, any discussion on sending this forward with a positive recommendation? All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Appointment of Eric Boudreau to replace John Gestad on the Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee. Um, I can speak to that. Okay. So John's been on the bike head committee for years, like since we've ever, since we've had it. There's no slot per se, but John has been active in Northampton uh, Friends of Trails and Greenways. Um, he was sort of their representative. He's stepping down from both bike head committee and from Trails and Greenways. Eric Boudreau is is an <coughs> officer on, on um, Friends of Northampton Trails and Greenways, and so it's nice sort of to have that that entity represented. He's come to the last couple meetings and doesn't seem to find us born. He's happy to serve. So, uh, and those are early meetings, right? Right, 7.30 so, in the morning. Oh, we we particularly appreciate anyone who's willing to do that. So, do I have a motion to recommend Eric to replace John as part of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee? So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. 
Number seven, endorse open space recreation and multi-use trail plan 2018 to 25 as it relates to multi-use trails. So I'll, I'll speak to that and basically ask you to put this off for a future meeting. This was on the agenda when I optimistically thought I'd be ready. And I'm oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll put that with, it's next month, but that That'd be great. No absolute promise, but hopefully. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll bump that to next month. Um, department and subcommittee reports. So, uh, who usually went first? <laughs> Director and All right, so a few items of interest. The Clement Street Bridge is currently closed, as everyone knows. Um, we anticipate a summer 2018 reopening um, after the bridge is repaired. Um, the bid opening for the repairs was January 31st. Uh, contract has been awarded to NEL Corporation of Middletown, Massachusetts, uh, just under $300,000 for the structural repairs. So actually came in um, what we had anticipated budget-wise, which is very good news. Um, so we hope for an early spring. And, are, there gonna um, be change this, so. are there gonna be changes to the weight limits going over that now once that work is done? I know it's been an issue with buses and their number of axles and the weight of the buses going over and it altered the bus routes. Um, we'll have to talk to MassDOT once the repairs are done. Their issue with this is that the current weight limit was not being adhered to. Mm -hmm. um, so when they were out there doing the inspection, that was part of what kind of forced the closure of the bridge was right. we had all manner of vehicles going over it. So, um, so once we actually dig into the repairs um, and kind of see what it looks like and what we find, um, we'll, we'll see what it gets this time. It's not going to be like a newer, stronger super bridge. My Same bridge. <laughs> okay, thank you. Maybe <coughs> when we're done. <laughs> um, Holyoke Street, uh, section of Holyoke Street, where, where Karen's and Sons construction of the contractor down there has installed the culvert, is going to be repaved in the, in the spring. Um, until then, the street is going to remain closed as it has been. Sidewalk inventory. We have a draft report from Alta. Uh, it's currently under review at the DPW. Um, we will be releasing it shortly. Uh, plan is to post it. Uh, on the city's website, so I, I will make sure that we can update <coughs> where that is um, once we finish our review, but I anticipate that being released very soon. So do you think we can put that on the agenda for next month? Oh, sure. Yeah, please do. We can put that for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, traffic signal upgrades, uh, one, of the, one of the capital uh, funding items for last year was uh, Bridge Street signal upgrades. So we have a, a request for proposals um, that has been drafted and issued for uh, traffic signal equipment at the intersection of Bridge Road, Bridge Road and Jackson Street. And that's actually going to turn into a little bit of a project because we have some underground utility work that we have to do there too. So one of the things Council and Nash and I had discussed was uh, some school zone flashing beacons uh, on Bridge Street by the Bridge Street Elementary School. So that's going to be part of this contract. And um, that's, you know, uh, uh, something that I think has been discussed at these meetings in the past, um, the, the need for some improvements to that area. Um, so this is, we're, we're looking at spring construction on this, so this is moving forward. Um, and the last thing, and this is, this is probably good news, uh, or this is definitely good news for this commission, um, DPW has been working on a complete overhaul of the TPC web pages. Uh, the, traffic com the traffic calming project list, our process, the manual, um, and we have made a, a lot of changes to what the TPC webpage actually looks like. Um, we have organized the projects and their status and put links to documents and memos related to the status of all of these projects. Um, which I think is going to be a very good tool not only for the commission but for the public who may feel like some of these requests have, have kind of been sitting for a long time with no action. Um, so I, I will plan to spend a little time with our new chair going over what we have done, how we have organized it, why we've done what we've done. Um, part of our new 
uh, but part of our new and more user-friendly website is parking requests. We get a lot of people who come in here for public comments and they want you know parking restricted or parking added or parking somehow changed and we had a, a sort of difficult process to track and implement these changes and, and so what we have done is we've created a link on the TPC's page where you can actually fill out an online form that then goes right into a spreadsheet so that people within the city can see where we're at in this process, like where where is this request sitting and who needs to take action on it to move it forward. So when someone comes in for public comment and says, you know, I'm on X Street and I want, um, you know, parking restricted, the advice to them would be to please visit the TPC's website and fill out this online form and then we can sort of walk them through the process from there and that's something we can discuss. You know, we have sort of a flow chart of who does what and where it goes from there. So we're just trying to kind of streamline this process. We have a huge backlog of, of projects that we needed to organize and generate memos for and some of them need to be closed, some of them need to be continued, some of them need to be reopened. So we have taken everything that's, that's kind of been sitting and has accumulated over the years and, and got it really organized and really kind of all gift wrapped in, in one spot. So that's something that we can plan to go over. And then it'll be up to you if you want to put it on an agenda to discuss, you know, next month to kind of give everyone an overview of, of what that looks like. Uh, I look forward to going through all of that stuff. So yeah, Maggie has uh, has done a super job of organizing everything. Maggie and Cindy at the DPW have and Karen have been putting this all together. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, that's great. Any other? That's, that's it. it. Yeah. Okay. Anybody, any other reports? We want to say good job, Maggie, for working on this. <laughs> we did. Good job, Thank you. So, thank you. Um, so the different both planning and the bike pack committee. Do you think some of these you've heard pieces of, so these are mostly updates, but um, the Rocky Hill bike path, this is the trail from the route where the bike path crosses Route 10 up to Route 66. Um, we've sort of been stuck for a while because we had different comments <coughs> from the accessibility people and the wetlands people who think we've worked that out. So we have submitted revised plans. We're hoping we get a 25% public hearing at some point in the next six months. So that would be the next section of trail that gets built. Um, we have a relatively small grant, about $100,000, to help extend the rail trail and leaves up to the town line. It's not much money, so we're trying to figure out what can we do you know, with, with a limited source of money for that project. Um, so we're having discussions with Williamsburg because they do things on their side of the line to see if we can sort of do the projects together. Um, we just got some, you know, we had almost a year ago, we had a public hearing on the roundabout at um, North King Street in Hatfield. Um, a lot of support throughout the city from, from by head people and a lot of strong opposition from immediate abutters to the project. MassDOT asked us to put it on hold where they did a cost-benefit analysis. We just got that yesterday, the day before, which basically said overwhelmingly the, the uh, roundabout is by far the most cost, has the greatest benefit for the cost. So it's, it's far more expensive than signal or than a realignment, but the benefit in terms of reduced Cues, uh, reduced air pollution, and reduced crashes. Is so yeah. that Hatfield Street? It's a Hatfield and North King Street. Okay. Um, and in that time, it was interesting, the, uh, the muffler shop, I think originally was opposed to it, and there was a big crack. They were working in the front yard, and then they went inside, and while they went inside, there was a big crash right where they were working, so they suddenly became believers. <laughs> um, so now we have to start working on design. We really have done no design work for a year. The great news for the city is this is typically the city just rights away within public rights of, within the city land, and MassDOT does it on state land. This right away is half on state and half on city land, but MassDOT's agreed to do it. So that's major in terms of both workload and cost, but bad in the sense that right away is the slowest thing in the process. So I'm not really predicting when this is going to get built. It's basically, the, the timeline is when MassDOT does the, the right away. But at least it's going. Have the abutters been informed that about the cost benefit analysis? Have the abutters been informed? No, we really just got this. Okay. We will do that. Okay. Um, so um, then the big thing I'm spending lots of time on is our, our Valley bike share. We start opening it in May. This is a, you know basically like Zipcar, but it's for bikes. 
there'd be 500 bikes around the valley, 140 bikes in Northampton, and 14 stations, um, electric pedal assist, um, and now we're working on designing the actual stations themselves. So we'll be opening, we're aiming for bike uh, commute to work week in the middle of May. Um, not all the stations won't be there. You know, maybe half the stations will be open, at least the system will start, and then we'll roll out the stations over the next month. Um, it basically goes from downtown to Florence and then east and north and south a little bit. So we opted for, this is the way most systems work, for a density of stations. So if you spread them way out, then it's frustrating for people because no one's going to want to walk 2,000 feet for a bike to their home. So they sort of have to be tied together. But of course, it means we don't serve place in the town. We hope to prove that it works. We're delaying them out in places that have the greatest usage on mixed uses. So they're not in any pure residential neighborhoods or any pure commercial areas. They're places that have different times of day. So you know, you wake up, you take your bike, and someone goes to work, and so they'd be more likely to be used over the day. Um, uh, we're working on the design of Leonard Street in Haydenville. This is being designed with um, um, traffic mitigation funds, and we finished the design, or dra draft design about three months ago, and sent it to MassDOT for comments, and just got their comments yesterday. So we sent it on to our designers. Uh, we don't have money to build this yet. We have, have some money to build it, but we said we're moving that through the process. Um, and then uh, related, um, we've you, so, you know, we've been working on sort of think of redesigning all of Main Street. What does that mean? How does that work? Um, we couldn't do it with money in hand to hire an engineer, and so we just got some grants in. We just got a signed contract a couple of days ago for half a million dollars. Um, so, with that, we now have money to hire somebody. So, in the next month or so, we're, we're doing RFP, we we'll turn circulate internally, and then we'll go out for bids for engineers. Question: the, the bike share is um, is our cost to the city, or is the vendor? So we got a grant for one point three million dollars from CMAC, from a federal grant. Um, that's the primary cost. The only additional cost to the city is the uh, bike share stations themselves with the poor concrete pads. So the vendor provides all the equipment. Sort of. So our grant paid for about two hundred ninety bikes and twenty nine stations. And the vendors providing additional stations to bring up to an additional 210 stations, I mean, 210 bikes. And stations. So there'd be some cost that comes out of traffic mitigation or going to city council Thursday, council approves um, for the actual pads themselves. That's the only cost. The service staff does it. How long is the contract with the vendor? Five years. And they're taking a huge risk. They, they're basically they're putting up two thirds of the cost between capital and operations. So, they have a lot of mm -hmm. Where else have they operated? Um, so, a few places uh, Baltimore, Park City, Birmingham, Alabama, um, three or four other ones in the United States, three or four in Europe. And then the, it used to be that, that Montreal ran a bike. So, when Montreal set up a bike share, it was one of the first ones in North America. It was done by a municipality. And they then spun off a private company, which was the, what's now City Bike in New York was started by them and um, so the principal the person who was running that is the person who set up this business. I'm fairly nice. I think they have 35,000 bikes out there right now. I will see you know if you read this in the paper is so it's interesting in the interviews so this company met all our qualifications for 35,000 bikes there was a Chinese firm which has 5 million bikes that didn't meet our qualifications because they've only been in business for a year um, and so this is models going out there of these bikes that you can sort of dump anywhere in the streets. So Worcester's using this. They're great, they're inexpensive, but the bikes are not that good and there's been a real problem with bikes being dumped on streets. Um, and so if you read about bikes, so again, it's a great way to expand things, but it has some disadvantage. We're not using that models when you, when you, you read dumped on streets? So they, they have a GPS in them and you basically grab the bike and you can dump, you can leave it anywhere you want. Um, and it will show up on your phone where the bikes are, so you know where it is. And the theory is where somebody wants to go, someone will want to come up. So it's it's great in terms of testing where this thing works, mm. but people literally just dump them on the pavement. Um, and so it becomes a problem for DPWs yeah. and for clearance and, um, <laughs> and theory mature. So, you know, there are these dockless stations in lots of cities where they paint bike racks 
and you have to leave it in the bike rack. Um, and so you can make it work, but it's, def it's more complicated. It's not always working. And we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Right. right. So these are electric assist bikes, so we can't do it. Our bikes will also be have stations yes. with power. All right. Correct. Got it. And I think you said before that some stations are being privately, so like Florence Bank is. So they're sponsored. Oh, okay. Still be by the city, but Florence Bank is a sponsor for three years. Mm -hmm. They're committed. So, you know, when you get a PDTA bus, your fare only covers about 20 to 25 percent of the bus. Um, when you drive your car in Northampton, your, your gas tax doesn't cover plowing the streets and doesn't cover lots of things. It's sort of a similar thing. So the user revenue is going to cover 15 to 20 percent of this. We need sponsors and advertisers to get the full amount. All right. Thank you, Wayne. Yes. Um, so the the next thing on the agenda is setting the meeting schedule for 2018. And um, typically, we meet on the third Tuesday of the month. And um, for next month, and so I, I've made a list here of those uh, third Tuesdays, the the dates. Um, I actually have a conflict with next month, and you voted me chair. So, um, um, so let me let me start by doing this. Can people meet on March thirteenth next month? It would be a week earlier, just like we did this month. I cannot. I can't. Yikes. Okay. Um, well, can people make the twenty? No, I can't. Maybe do we need a form or five? I also have a conflict with my for your. This is just a third Tuesday. Yeah. 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 We usually meet on the third Tuesday. Have you been showing up on the second Tuesday? We moved to it is we because there was. It's public school break, and so a right. lot of people, or some people, are conflicts. Right, we wouldn't have all of the public. Oh, okay, the same on December nineteenth. Right, okay. got it. Thank you. So, um, are, are you okay with covering on the twentieth, or? Okay, okay, all right. Darn it, I'll miss that meeting. All right. Um, uh, so here's the dates that I have: uh, March twentieth, April seventeenth. So, okay, just note, April seventeenth is also uh, school vacation. Okay. Um, suggestions on how to handle that? Go to the tenth. Yeah. Can people do the tenth? All right. So that one's set. Uh, May fifteenth. Does that work for people? June 19th. July 17th. July or August? I think Tuesday. What did you do with June? What did you say? The 19th? June 19th. Oh, 19th. We're going to just one of the summer? Yeah, what, what yeah, is. Oh, yeah. I think typically because people's vacation plans aren't set, right. we just send out emails or check the meeting before. Like right now, both meetings work for me, but I'm sure I'm going to be waiting something like that. I don't know what month that is. I suspect it's two people. So we wait a month or two to figure out which month we're going to do? That's what we've done in the past. Okay. I'm flexible, it works. All right. So we'll skip those for now. Then, uh, then we're jumping up to September. There's September 18th, October 16th, November 20th. Am I going too fast? In December 18th. Some people are writing and some people are looking at their calendar. <laughs> um, I'm going to miss October 16th, but obviously, don't. That's okay. fine. Be so, are people okay with these meeting times? Yes. yes. Just in terms of planning the agenda for our next month, yes. um, I am out of Nobody the country. The week of the 19th, the week of March 19th. So, in terms of planning the agenda, um, 
please just keep that in mind um, unless the meeting date is yeah i'm not going to be there either so so maybe you know you can plan for for um you know we can discuss the tpc website changes um, right. at the april meeting um, so you would just get a very general I mean, I'll send someone in my stead, but you'll just get a very general update from the DPW, but not the, the sort of updates that we that we were just talking about. Okay. So you're out of town on both the 20th and the 13th. Um, I have a meeting with the mayor um, on the 13th. Okay. So. Um, could we explore the 13th again? Because you, you wouldn't be able to be there for either meeting. And if you do the 13th, then I can attend. Of March. March 13th. Yeah, I can. All right. Um, yeah, let's move it to the 13th. Okay. So. Um, if we're not going to have a lot on the agenda, we can always skip a month, too. We do occasionally do that. And if we don't have a lot to cover, and the thing we are going to cover, it sounds like we won't really be able to cover that anyway. Is there a lot that we would have on the agenda? Um, let's see. Uh, you know, well, actually, I have a number of things, but they all relate to you. Um, so how about this? I'll meet with Director Lascalia. We can figure out, you, you can share with me what you want to share. And if I determine that it's, you know, that it's not going to be helpful for us to meet without um, the director here, then I'll postpone, I'll cancel that meeting and push everything back. Sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, good. So it's still the 20th of March, correct? 20th of March? <laughs> no. Thing. No, it'd be the 13th. Unless canceled. Unless canceled. I hate dates. All right. So, um, let's see. The, the the last thing um, before we adjourn is I just want to say that a number of us were sent a letter by Tess Poe, and that um, I don't want to discuss it tonight. But I want to put it on the agenda for the next time we meet, um, so I can get back to her and say that we're we're going to look at that and we'll, we'll get back to her. So. Could you repeat that name? Tess Poe. T E S S Poe. P O E. And that is the last thing on the agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.